preparing. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Captain's Corner. <laughs> welcome, everyone. This is your place to get informed about first steps to recovery. And also, you will learn how we at Safe Harbor um, help to create healthy and safe communities. Today, we have our captain here. Hi, Kath Hoffman. Ahoy. 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 And I am Kirsten, first mate marketing at the Harbor. And today we will chat about a very interesting topic. Um, and even I don't know really what Kat is going to say. She wouldn't share it with me. Um, it's all about how it came to be that Safe Harbor um, was hosting an indigenous conference. And this conference um, is called Variety, and it was last weekend. And Kath. Please fill me in now. I can hardly wait. <laughs> How did it come to be? Well, yeah, there's a history. And it wasn't until I got home last night that I started to recall things in my history. Um, and in my very early days at Safe Harbor that were stepping stones to this conference, you know, and you don't know. You don't know things going on, what's going to happen, right? And um, this conference was extraordinary. Simply put, it was extraordinary. This was an international well variety conference. And uh, it was focused on recovery and healing uh, and collaboration and unity. Uh, it is extraordinary. Okay, tell, wanted, tell us more. What was we wanted to have Lynn? We wanted to have Lynn come and tell you today, or Hans come and tell you today about their experiences. But those guys are tired. They're very tired today, and I'm tired too. It takes a lot out of you that you don't expect. But uh, yeah, that history. So I was in the corporate world for a long time. I worked for a company called Video View, and I was there for 13 years as my kids were growing up. And um, when I finished that job, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, so I went and volunteered at Red Deer Native Friendship Society. And they were just about to host a fundraiser, so they needed some help. So I went there and that was my very first step into the indigenous culture, very first. And there was a woman there named Trudy Black. She was a really cool chick. And she told me, you know, I usually don't say this to people, but you should go be a life skills coach. And I was like, what even is that? I don't even know what that is, right? But I was curious and I found out that Grant McEwen was having a life skills coach that very next month and someone had just dropped out. And if I wanted to go, I could go. Shut up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was in 1997. I figured out that was 25 years ago. So I went to Grant McEwen. I drove back and forth from Edmonton every day because um, I had little kids. And my husband, my husband Dennis, helped a lot too. Um, and I took this course. Then the instructor of that course, a few years later in 2002, um, called me up and said, hey, I'm just, she was, a me she was trained in mediation. And she said, I'm just doing some mediation in an Aboriginal peacemaking circle. Do you wanna come and see it? And I was like, yes, I do. So this was the indigenous way then of, um, having an offender or someone in a circle and the family and everybody trying to resolve this conflict with a peacemaking model, right? And in that circle, that circle was led by an elder named Joe Carden from Saddle Lake. And Joe Cardinal uh, debriefed with all of us who were in that circle after. So I was sitting there, I was very excited. The circle itself was fascinating to watch how everything was working. And I was really excited to be in the debrief um, and I'm very mindful and trying to be respectful of everything, not knowing exactly 
how to fit. And Joe Cardinal just started telling these stories, of course. And one of the stories, he used the word pie, like apple pie that you eat, right? My dad had died a few years before that. And when Joe Cardinal said that word pie, it sounded exactly like my dad. And here I'm trying to be all cool and everything in this circle and tears start running down my face. I'm not crying like, ooh, ooh, but tears are running down my face and they won't stop. And I'm trying to be doing this so nobody will notice that I got this waterfall thing going on. It was, it was just big, right? So that kind of knocked me off balance. And after when we went for a break, Joe was sitting there in the hallway and I went to him and I told him that when he said this word pie, it, it sounded like my dad. And he looked at me and he said, I'm glad your dad came to sit with us today. Mm -hmm. And then I was crying again, right? Of course. It was the coolest thing. Like it was, it just washed over me this idea that my dad was sitting with us today, right? And that was yeah. just cool, right? So that's 2002, the same year. Remember this, this is the same year that in Red Deer, Safe Harbor is just getting born, if you will. It's 2002. People in Red Deer are working on turning Safe Harbor into a society, okay? So I'm having this experience at the same time, not even knowing about Safe Harbor mm -hmm. and Joe Cardinal, right? So there we are, 2005, I start working for Safe Harbor. In 2006, we were lucky enough, the crew at the harbor and some other agencies in Red Deer went to Ottawa to the first ever street level conference. And that was specifically built for agencies that are offering frontline services. And the theme, guess this, the theme of the conference was truth tellers and peacemakers. Oh. 2006, that's the first year I'm there. And that was the inspiration then for the seven stars, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then in 2006, who comes for an interview for the detox? Because we're getting ready to hire people for our new detox at Safe Harbor. And who comes to work, hire, or have an interview with me? But Lynn Yonison, our elder today. Mm. And through my interview with Lynn, I immediately knew who he was. And I thought, I'm, why, what am I doing interviewing you? Like, you should be interviewing me probably. Because Lynn, as he is today, was already that blanket of love. And all I knew is, yeah, I want to hire you for the detox, right? There's no yeah. Indigenous program at the harbor yet. And then in 2007, we got word from uh, ADAC at that time that they had money to start an Aboriginal program. Um, we had been operating the MATS program, you know, the shelter for people who are higher mm -hmm. intoxicated. Lots of the people using that shelter were Indigenous. Yep. And so we got some money to start an Aboriginal program. And who happened to be there but Lynn Yonison and ready to go, right? So wow. we start by offering sharing circles and, and that sort of thing, right? In 2008, we have our first spring feast, okay? So then in 2011, I was lucky enough to go to Banff and be part of Alberta Family Wellness Symposium on the brain and addiction. And it was a three-year symposium. I got to go for a week at a time and just get all of this fantastic information on the new brain science, right? And how, how it applied to addiction and prevention, and all those kinds of things. And when I was at that conference, I was outside having a smoke before it started. And there was a native man standing out there. And so I just started talking to him. I just talked to him for like three minutes or so. And he said to me, oh, you're a coyote. And I said, oh, and I didn't know exactly what he meant by that, but I thought, okay. Um, and then when I went into the conference, turned out it was Don Coyas, who is the founder of White Bison. And he was there to present on this new recovery or this well the red road to recovery. 
right? He was there to present at this conference about that. Okay, so that was in 2011. Wow. That was 11 years ago, right? And then now here we are 11 years later and Safe Harbor is hosting this conference and Don's daughter, Kateri, uh, is the executive director of White Bison and she was here with us hosting this conference along with her wonderful team of Juliana and, and Tessa. And yeah, it was, I couldn't believe it. Like when I was looking back at those things, I was like, Okay, if this isn't in the indigenous world, they would say this is creator led, you know, this was mm -hmm. all, all of these things. These aren't coincidences, you know, it's not a coincidence that I volunteered at Red Deer Native Friendship all those many years ago because I was interested and I wanted yes. to learn more. Something called me there. I wanted to learn more, right? And so now, those of you out there might remember that Safe Harbor was founded by a fellow named Phil Rock. And we've talked to him about him before. He was the forefather of the organization. He was a mentor for me. Um, and he died, unfortunately. Um, and on Phil's funeral card, uh, his wife Val had put on the quote that Margaret Mead has about um, never doubt a small dedicated group of community can change the world and indeed it's the only thing that ever has right mm -hmm. and yesterday when she closed the conference Kateri Dawn's daughter said that quote <sighs> from Phil's funeral card all those years ago so like whoa right like whoa it gives me goosebumps to think yeah about. yeah and remember my dad showed up in that circle with Joe Cardinal. Mm -hmm. Well, I was to speak at this conference and do a presentation. And I was going to do a presentation um, about, of course, the typical one I always do about safe harbor and harm reduction and blah, blah. And, you know, then I would tell a few of these stories that I just told you now about how we came to be hosting this conference, except I got, I got through my, the first part of my presentation and the seven mm -hmm. stars and a little bit mm -hmm. of harm reduction. And then my guy that I love and that killed himself 13 years ago showed up. No way. Way. And I was all, I thought, talk about Merck. And then I thought, no, you're not talking about Merck here. What are you going to talk about Merck? do it I'm not ready to talk about work I don't have it on my paper I'm not and all of a sudden I started telling the story of him and his struggle with addiction and shame because it was related to shame because mm -hmm. I said that's what killed him it wasn't his addiction it was shame that killed him and for me the shame that I held um, as the captain at safe harbor and the guy I love has an addiction. And what mm -hmm. will people think? Like, I'm going to get an ex in Captain Land. Mm -hmm. um, and this big, huge thing just came out of me. And I was, I had my tears again and my tears. And I yeah. said, I think I said at one point, I don't know what you guys do to make all this happen, but it's just happened. And it's just, I couldn't, I, it just came out. You know, and for 13 mm -hmm. years, I, I don't tell that story a lot, you know, and for 13 years, it sat there. And then here I was in this circle again, this circle of love and safety. And that's, that just came and it just was supposed to be, you know, and so many people after, of course, came and said, no, you touched my heart. One guy said, you could have been my wife talking about me, you know, and just, and of course, all their stories that they told that were like, you know, just like I did, all of those stories had that same effect. It wasn't because I was some awesome speaker. I was kind of this blubbering captain up there, but everyone who told the story from the heart like that, or who had their spirits with them, guiding them in that room. Um, everyone 
had people coming up to them after and saying, mm. you could have been talking right to me. You could have been speaking. You could, you told my story. You, you know, and that was the magic in that room, the power. Do you know, on Friday night at the conference, they were to go out to Fort Normandale for a sweat. Uh, and we had to cancel that because of the fire ban in the county, right? So instead, at the last minute, they did uh, what they refer to as a healing circle on Friday night. And there were 75 people in that circle on Friday night, and it went for four hours. Wow. And I, uh, my niece from Saskatoon was stopping here on her way to Canmore on Saturday. So I didn't go to the circle. I came home and, um, but the next day I found out really about this circle and, and the power in there and the, the healing and the sorrow and the joy and the gratitude and like four hours with 75 people in a big healing circle like that reverberates oh. that that energy is going to reach the shelter like it's going to go all it is going all over right like this is no ordinary conference like i'm getting goosebumps again <laughs> it was so cool it was so cool and so like i was a noodle I was a noodle Friday night. I was a noodle Saturday. I don't know how those guys kept going like they were going. And they just did. Um, but even vicariously, that energy is just around, you know, and you're, yeah. And that, um, that unity, because I, I, you know, I was, I was the captain at Safe Harbor with my crazy captain on and hat on and, you know, kind of separate if you will from yeah. this. but no not at all not at all separate and so that collaboration is really extraordinary we really celebrate it because it's so cool it's so cool to show that that non-indigenous and indigenous cultures can work together you know we have caught so many commonalities even though we may be a little different in some things so much is common you know, mm -hmm. the seven stars, the seven teachings, the, there are just, as I said, in, in when I was talking about Lynn, uh, that merge was successful because the foundation is love. And when the foundation is love, the rest is fluff. It might come up and poke us for a little bit, but when you can stick on that foundation and stay there and where are we, where are we making decisions from? Are we making our decisions based on this foundation of love or based on our differences, you know, and the beauty of um, Lynn and Cork and all of those guys that are doing such great work with the Harbor crew or, or are the Harbor crew. Um, that's what it is. It's finding that common ground and, and staying true to it, standing tall on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I having, an indigenous program and if you will i'm going to just use this slang about me the white person yes. looking at the ceremony okay i help by telling them hey you guys it would be helpful if we if we send a sheet that says what a sweat is what's expected when you go to a sweat you know what's and same thing for a spring feast because people don't know and people might want to come and they mm -hmm. might not come because mm -hmm. they don't want to be disrespectful. They, you know, they want to be, they want to know and, and want to follow the protocols. Um, and so that having, having that merge is really good too, because, mm -hmm. you know, we, I heard many of them say over the weekend, that it's not about color. It's not about mm -hmm. my culture versus your culture or the, you know, even the tribes do that. It's our tribe does it this way and our tribe does it that way. Just like, you know, Germans do it this way and Catholics <laughs> do it this way and whoever yeah. or whatever, right? That's all goes away. And how do we come together to sit in that love and healing? Mm -hmm. So there's That's a whole the bunch of healing that went on this weekend. <laughs> 
I also felt um, when I sat with you at the registration and then when I went around take, to take pictures, I felt like that the energy was very different from other conferences I have ever been to. It was very um, welcoming, very relaxed, um, yeah. laid back, and just you just wanted to be around. Just safe, right? Yeah, it, it felt safe. it felt safe. Like it, it yeah. was said like by every speaker, um, but I could also feel it. It was not just a word that they said. It you yeah. could feel it in the air, and yeah, um, yeah it felt really really healing also what you just said like getting this information out like what is a sweat like I, because yeah. I did I had no idea what to expect from this conference yeah. and I said like everyone that is hurting that is doesn't know where to go like this is a place for them to to go like it yeah. was well and yeah. I didn't I didn't know Mm -hmm. that that needed to come out you know that's been there 13 years it comes out in snippets and with different mm -hmm. people you know mm -hmm. but so when you say you know when you think you need healing and stuff but sometimes you don't know but you don't know and then just being there um it does it for you even if you didn't talk even if you didn't tell your story you know you pick up on that energy in that room and Oh, those drums, man. Those drums are so powerful. And when they do the great big ones, like this, boom, boom, boom. Oh, it just makes me, I love that part. I love that part. Yeah. It was really cool, man. I hope we get to do it again. Um, uh, it was, yeah, it was just the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's pretty cool that all of those things led up to this, you know? Yeah. It's cool, man. So cool. Yeah. I really liked um, the story about the healing forest. Mm. And um, I think this is really what I found immediately is really the connecting part also to safe harbor. So basically for everyone, like the, the healing forest, you can imagine, like imagine just a big forest and all those trees are sick. Um, and you take one tree out of that environment and put it into a nursery and give him all this, give him all the soil and um, love and nutrients yeah. and sun. And then the tree gets healthy again and you put the tree back into the sick forest. So what happens is that that one tree gets sick again. And um, so, and this is, I think, the analogy to safe power because we don't only hear this one tree like you have to hear the whole forest and this is starts with the individual and then with the family and then the community and this is really yeah. just this ripple effect yeah that's I know that's such a cool analogy mm -hmm. um, it's easy to see how that happens when you talk about trees hey you don't mm -hmm. always see it when we talk about people and you're absolutely right you know and who's in the forest and just like you said the clients, the guests, the staff, the community. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You know, uh. <laughs> I know. I still feel like a noodle today. I'm just kind of like, oh, 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 oh. yeah. I have to get back into the other world again now. Yeah. And we will talk about uh, more indigenous related um, stories over the next couple of weeks because we have some special guests guests already for you lined up um yep. and friday is truth and reconciliation day yes yeah that's an important day i'm glad we're saying those words out loud on a national level mm -hmm. um and i think that you know that's the first step just like at that conference you know saying mm -hmm. those things out loud and and having people hear them and, and try and appreciate what they mean and and just in your own way honoring that the best way you can do that is get out into nature if you can and breathe in some of its beautiful fall smells yes. and that'll that'll help you connect back to where we need to be yeah take off your shoes and socks and just walk bare feet <laughs> you know what i thought of you know once somebody said to me you know how you say i'm gonna go back to nature mm -hmm. Somebody said to me, you are nature. 
And I was like, what? Mm. And I thought that. And I thought, yeah, you're not going back to anything. You know what I mean? Like we are nature too. Like we carry this around. So in the woods, you know, we go and get rejuvenated in there, maybe, you know, and get back to center or or wherever we have to be. But we're Mm -hmm. nature. I was like, I never thought of that before. Hey, me neither. No, we're nature. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, Keith, thank you so much for um, today's Captain's Corner. Thanks for coming and helping out on the conference. Oh, yeah, no, it was my pleasure. And I will also share some some photos later today. Um, And if everyone has questions, please put them in the comments. Um, I had one question today, Kath, asking, someone was asking if we have an elder available. We do. Um, That's what I said. Um, I think I would just, yeah. They could call the harbor or email office at safeharborsociety.org and they'll get hooked up that way. Okay. Yeah. So either phone 347-0181 or office at safeharborsociety.org. And don't forget, Harbor has a U in it. A U. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Kev. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I will share um, that also again. And um, as always, Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. (laughs) Thanks, everyone.